The owner of this black Labrador was shocked when her dog gave birth to a massive litter of puppies. They filled the house with barking sounds and ripped open trash. But it was worth it because they were so cute, all except for two. After a couple of weeks, they started acting strange. And when the vet decided to take a closer look at them, he found out why. His discovery made him turn pale instantly. Dog gives birth to a litter. Vet turns pale when he takes a closer look. When Alyssa, the owner of this black mother Labrador, discovered that her dog was pregnant, she was over the moon. All her family and friends loved her dog and wanted one just like her. So when Alyssa decided to get her best doggy friend pregnant, she hoped it would stick. And it did all right because dog Rosie gave birth to a huge litter of 15 pups. They all seemed fine at first. They were naked, whining, and overwhelming in numbers. It took some adjustments, but I got the hang of it after a while. There were more pups than potential owners, but Alyssa knew these dogs would be popular. Well, except for two, maybe because after the pups were a couple of weeks old, she started noticing some strange behavior with them. They were far more aggressive and had demolished multiple pieces of furniture already. Shortly after this odd behavior started, Allison called the local vet to stop by. The pups were scheduled for their first flu shot anyway, so an appointment needed to be made eventually. Allison waited patiently in her living room for the doorbell to ring. The flu shot might have been the main reason for his visit, but Allison was mostly hoping that the vet could explain her two strange pups. When the vet walked into Allison's home, he started by congratulating her. That is a big nest, dear. You must be so proud, he spoke. But the vet noticed something even before Allison could respond and welcomed the man further into her home. It was what Allison hoped they could talk about. But she never expected the vet to immediately notice something off. These two pups seem odd, he said while walking past Allison. When the vet was entirely inside Allison's home, he saw all the pups running, barking, and playing together. They were just happy pups doing puppy things. But the two odd pups stayed away from the pack most of the time. They huddled together in the corner of the room and made aggressive noises to their siblings. This has been going on for a while, Allison stated. What's wrong with them? The vet first gave all the other puppies their flu shot since they were more straightforward to handle. The procedure went by without any hiccups, so that would leave most of his time to deal with the odd ones out. The vet approached the two black pups, who were fully balled up at this point. He picked one up carefully, almost getting scratched in the process. His inspection started, but... But pretty soon, the man was scratching his head in confusion. He looked at the pup's eyes, measured its teeth, and tried to get as much information from the animal as possible. Allison hoped to get some answers, but never expected the vet to say what he said next. He started with a long and deemed hum. The vet sat on a chair, holding the pup in his lap. Madam, these aren't pups at all. This comment took Allison aback, so she looked at the veterinarian with a confused look. He was unwilling to say what they were because he wasn't fully sure at that point and did not want to worry Allison. He decided to give the animals one last good look before passing his verdict. Allison looked at the scene closely and speculated what they could be if not her own Labrador puppies. But no matter how much the dog on it tried, she could not find a single answer to that burning question. And even if she had thought of something, it would surely be far from the truth because nobody could have predicted what would come next. The vet's eyes were now almost touching the pup's face. That's how close he was. And after a few minutes of close inspection, he suddenly let out a small scream. After his vocal outburst, he dropped the pup from his lab, making it land on the floor and scattered back to the corner. The vet looked seriously frightened. His skin was visually pale, and his eyes seemed to have grown half in size. The poor man took a few large steps back, which almost made it seem like he was inching for the home's exit. The entire ordeal was making Allison quite nervous. Allison heard the spooked vet talk to himself. It was quiet enough so she couldn't listen in but loud enough to cause even more tension. Eventually, he said he needed to make a quick phone call. Just a moment was the last thing he said before walking into an adjoining room. Allison saw the vet move around behind the glass door. 
He talked frantically on the phone, making wild gestures with his hands. What the hell is going on with these pups? Allison heard herself speak out loud. She looked at the black balled up duo in the corner of her living room and felt a tear roll down her cheek. Were they sick? Were they something other than Labrador pups? She was beginning to unravel and wanted answers. After about ten minutes, the vet walked back into the room and Allison could see visible fear in his eyes. The vet promised not to beat around the bush this time. He started by asking Allison a question that would prove to be very important. Do you recall how many pups your Labrador birthed during labor? Allison found this an odd question but decided to play along. She answered with the number 15. There were 15 baby dogs after she was done. But then the vet said that he counted 17 dogs today. This statement caused panic in the young woman's heart. She never thought to recount the number of pups she had. There were 15 at birth, so why count them again afterward? That number should have been the same. And Allison's panic grew even more significant after the vet finally concluded what these animals were. These two black creatures are not dogs. In fact, they are very dangerous, so be very careful. Allison got angry in a hurry after that. This vet gave her confusion upon confusion. Vagueness followed up by a warning, but no answer on what she was dealing with. Enough, man. Enough with the secrecy. Please just tell me what these pups are. If they're not from Rosie's litter, what are they? Allison pressed the man on a distinctive resolution. But she wished she had remained in the dark when she heard his answer. The vet nodded and took a deep breath before answering. He said these animals looked like pups, but they were far from it. It helps that they're the same shade of black and that these species kind of look the same right after birth. But they are distinctively different and far more dangerous when they grow up. You have two black panther cubs in your living room, madam, the vet said. Allison was in shock. How is this possible? These animals don't live around here. How can they have made it into my home? The vet couldn't give her a factual answer, of course, since he wasn't there but he made a calculated guess by saying they probably snuck in somewhere at night. They are excellent climbers even at this age. And with their matching looks, you never noticed. The vet even knew where they came from. The vet explained that he just got off the phone with the local zoo director. His facility was the only park in the area known to hold the Black Panther. And won't you know it, they are missing their large black cat right now. The vet said this with a nervous smile because he also knew what this meant for Allison. He said that the panther escaped a few weeks ago. Apparently, the large cat predator dug underneath an old fence in its enclosure and snuck out somewhere at night. According to sources, the cat has been spotted in some fields on the outskirts of town. It was heading toward the forested hillside and hasn't been seen since, the vet stated. The zoo director informed the vet that the panther was pregnant at the moment of escaping. And apparently, it gave birth close to your home. Allison listened intently to every word the vet said and read between the fine lines of his message. And that made her come to a conclusion that scared her. If the panther gave birth close to my house and is looking for her cubs, then eventually it will find its way into my home, right? The vet nodded, saying that this was a very good possibility but we will not let that happen. After pondering that scary thought for a while, something clicked with Allison. She remembered seeing something on the news about the giant cat's escape a couple of weeks ago. Police advised residents to stay indoors for a while, but the story lost traction and was never mentioned again. She never connected this escape with her litter. Why would she have? Panic was sinking in with Allison, causing her to act irrationally. The young woman paced around the house, hoping it would help her think straight. While doing that, she also tried to lure her pups away from the panther cubs since they were dangerous and clearly getting irritated from the busy litter surrounding them. With trembling hands, she eventually reached for her phone. She dialed 911 and hoped the police could help her remove these wild animals from her house. But then... But right before the phone rang for the first time, the hand of the veterinarian intervened. He took the device from Allison's hand and hung up. What are you doing? 
Allison shouted in response. But the vet wasn't about to apologize. He had a good reason for his interruption. We don't want panic in the public eye, and police involvement would surely raise some eyebrows. I have a better idea, he said. They had to secure a safe exit for these cubs, ensuring they returned to the zoo. But more importantly, they had to capture the mother panther without the press or civilians getting wind of it. This has to be done quietly. Do you understand? Allison nodded, indicating that she understood why he was so cautious. So what do we do now? The vet looked at the two cubs in the corner and started smiling. He said that tracking the mother down had to be the priority. We already have the cubs, so as long as they don't escape our sights, we are good, I think. But finding and grabbing the grown partner wasn't going to be easy. Luckily for Allison, this clever vet had a plan. We have to lure the creature out of hiding. And you have the perfect tools for it. Her babies. The woman looked at all her pets, including the two panther cubs in the corner, with a worried look. Even though they were very dangerous, she did grow attached to them in a way. She felt responsible for their well-being and could not simply give them away without doing anything for them. I want to help out in any way I can, Allison stated, and the vet couldn't agree more. They eventually settled on a plan that was suitable for all parties. The vet grabbed his phone once more and called several people. This time, he stayed in the room so Allison could listen in on the whole thing. The time for secrecy was gone. After the calls were done and a team was assembled, he told Allison to take a good night's rest. Our mission will begin at dawn, and you must be alert. The following day, Allison's alarm went off at 5 a.m. She never got up this early, but today was special. She had 30 minutes to prepare, so she prepared a hearty meal and jumped in the shower to wake up fully. After her last bite of oatmeal was in, the doorbell rang. Like clockwork, the young woman said, smiling. She ran toward the front door, already knowing who was behind it. Slowly, Allison opened up. And when she did, Allison saw a small assembled team standing on the front lawn of her house. The familiar face of her vet led the team. The other members were part of the wildlife rescue team. They were recruited by both her vet and the zoo director. They were very good at their job, but the critical role in this team belonged to Allison herself. The well-rested woman invited the squid into her home. It was time for action, Allison knew. So, she started dressing herself appropriately as fast as she could. She already had on clothes, but hiking boots and a thick winter coat were necessary if they were traversing the woods all day. Allison also saw that the team was gearing up. They opened suitcases and pulled out camouflage vests. They even showed her the tranquilizer guns they were planning on using. This was getting serious. The team's driver was already behind the wheel, and Allison wanted to take her seat in the back. But before she was allowed to enter, the team wanted to go over some ground rules. You are allowed to come with us. But only if you promise to stay in the jeep the entire time. We will park it in our base camp, and there you will remain, understood? Allison agreed, and then they drove off. After about a 15-minute drive, the jeeps reached the forest's edge. They were about to leave and trade the urban jungle for a real one. That thought made Allison's stomach turn a bit. Until then, she felt only adrenaline since the moment she got up. But as the trees closed the view of the town behind her, it suddenly became very real. This was the most impulsive thing she had ever done, and... And this could just as well go very wrong, that much Allison realized. They arrived at the forest base camp shortly after. The team exited the car and had a quick meal before heading out. We don't know how long this will take, so a full belly is important, one of the more friendly team members said, smiling. The vet stayed with Allison inside the car and saw the rescue squad walk off. The team left base camp, but not Allison's view, because the car was filled with monitors on which the young woman could follow them. The team wore GoPro-style cameras on their vests, transmitting a feed directly to the Jeep. This was standard procedure for their safety, but it also gave Allison and the vet a front-row seat to the show. 
Allison saw how the men made their way through the dense forest. She heard the team captain, the one who was so kind to her, address his team. Men, we have to be careful and alert with every step. We're in the panther's territory right now, and the animal will surely spot us long before we spot her. These creatures are incredibly stealthy. And when threatened, they can be very aggressive. The words echoed through Allison's mind. And soon she would find out from up close. As the team ventured deeper into the forest, one of the men spotted a fresh paw print. It had rained just last night, so the panther's paw made a deep indentation in the forest's soil. And that wasn't all they found because they found a deceased wild boar just 30 feet away from the print. The claw marks were 100% panther made, and the freshness of the wounds indicated that she was around here not long ago. Tension grew within the group, and a high-pitched growl was heard in the distance, adding to that tension. Allison also heard the sound of the female panther through the monitors in the jeep, and she was not the only one. The two little cubs were in a cage behind her. And after hearing their mother's call, they went wild. Loud growls came from their little mouths, and their movements made the cage shift around. Allison knew that the team was close to finding the mother. It was exhilarating and nerve-wracking at the same time. Allison's eyes were glued to the screen, trying to spot anything near the squad. She was fixated, so when the jeep door opened out of nowhere, Allison could only flinch out of initial fright. It was one of the team members. I think we're very close. It's time for the confrontation. Allison was so focused on the screen and the details of the dense forest that she didn't realize that the squad had walked in a circle. Their search for the mother panther had led them all the way back to base camp, where the jeep was parked. But that means that the grown panther is around here somewhere, Allison said, a bit frightened. But she had no how close it actually was. With the van doors open fully, the panther cubs could see, hear, and smell their surroundings. The senses in panthers are strong, even in little ones. So the moment they heard their mother's growl again, they started calling for her from inside the car. It was nerve-wracking for Allison, and that feeling only grew when she saw the rescue team inch closer to the van. The mother was almost upon them. The vet was no use in this situation. He had no bond with these cubs and couldn't fight off a grown panther. So, it was up to Allison to help in this situation, even if it was just a little. She started talking to her cubs softly, singing songs and shushing throughout. And for some strange reason, it worked. The cubs were quiet and looking at her fondly. But was it too late? When Allison finally got the babies quiet, the rescue team had made it all back to camp. The young woman stuck her head outside of the jeep and saw that they all formed a protective circle around the vehicle. Tranquilizer guns were pointed outward and safety clips were taken off. After that, an eerie quiet fell over the forest, and that silence lasted uncomfortably long. But then, out of nowhere, a loud roar was heard in the forest. And this time, it sounded unbelievably close. All team members looked around frantically, trying to find any clue to where the Black Panther was lurking. Panic was in full swing within the group because nobody saw the animal, nobody except Allison. She was busy inspecting the monitors inside the jeep. And after squinting her eyes, she saw a black shadow move in the background. The jeep's cameras were normally operated by a professional within the team. It was a perfect way to use technology to help the team find things they missed. And that was again the case this time, but now Allison was the operator. Her cameras saw more than the human eye, so she was the perfect spotter. A few moments later, she saw the black shadow again. There is movement to your right, she shouted. Not a single member heard her warning from inside the van, so hastily, Allison searched for a way to reach the team. She looked around and saw a walkie-talkie lying on the passenger seat. That's it. She dialed the number correlating with the nearest team member and started talking. Member 163, there is movement to your right in the bushes. But while saying this, Allison realized it might already be too late. Because just seconds after her alert ended, the giant cat came jumping out of the foliage. It growled violently and came rushing in. 
The trained professionals were usually quite on top of things, but this cat was smart and caught the entire guard group. They all stood there frozen in fear. Their ready-to-fire stance was far removed from landing a shot. Something needed to happen, or this was going to be bad. And that's when Allison did the most impulsive thing in her life. Up until this point, it was going along with the group. But what she did next topped that easily. She grabbed the cage that held the cubs and jumped out of the jeep. This move put her own life at risk, but if she did nothing, harm would undoubtedly fall on those brave men. Allison now stood in the middle of the circle. She locked eyes with the massive cat for the first time in real life and felt her heartbeat in her chest. This was probably a stupid idea, but it was the only thing she could come up with. The young woman placed the cage on the ground, never losing sight of their mother. The panther approached, breaching the circle while ignoring all members. Pretty soon, the creature was just a few feet away from her. Allison's instinct told her to do this, but at this moment, she questioned everything. She was kneeling in a woodland area, within striking distance of one of the world's most dangerous animals. This could go horribly wrong, she thought to herself. Allison had her eyes closed at this point and wished for the best. She heard the cat's breath right in front of her face, followed by soft growling. Slowly but shaking, Allison opened her eyes. And when she did, she saw that the cat had crept almost face to face with her. It was scary and mesmerizing at the same time. What Allison also noticed was that the panther was far from aggressive. The animal just looked at the young woman, inspecting her in a way, before eventually moving her head downward to nudge her little panther cubs. What's going on? The rescue team was in awe of the sight as well. They stood at a distance and were happy to be alive. And if it wasn't for Allison's quick thinking, they probably wouldn't have been standing there in the same way. One of the team members got Allison's attention after she snapped out of her panther-induced trance. He said the mother probably trusted her because her children did as well. Allison smiled and looked down at the reunion with love in her heart. She said she had only lived with the cubs for a few weeks, but had to admit that the little troublemakers grew on her. They were a handful, but I sure loved them. Just as much as I did the rest of my pups. The thought of the little ones communicating this message to their actual mother was just beyond special. The scene was so unorthodox and beautiful that the team almost forgot what they had come here to do. They had a mission to escort the panthers back to the zoo. Luckily, the team captain snapped out of his trance in time and eventually shot the mother panther with one of his darts. It was quick, painless, and needed in this situation. Pretty soon, all the animals would be reunited in a safe environment. Allison was grateful for the cub's role in her life and shed a tear as she saw the loaded truck drive off with all three animals. They returned to the zoo, but they would never leave her heart. Eventually, the team dropped Allison off at her place. There, she was greeted by her own set of 15 children. But the young woman would not be parted from the panther cubs for long. Because the next day, after feeding her 15 baby pups, Allison drove over to the local zoo where the panther and her cubs resided. She got a call that they were doing fine and that she was allowed to take a look. That was an opportunity she, of course, could not pass up. So, with excitement in her heart, she entered the park and walked over to the enclosure where her babies now lived. The last few weeks' events, which concluded in yesterday's confrontation, were still a bit unreal to Allison. She realized they had happened, but it all felt like a dream. She was never this brave, but somehow, the cubs brought something out of her that she hardly recognized herself. She was happy that she helped in a big way and grateful to have known the cubs personally even though it only was for a few weeks. When Allison reached the panther enclosure, she couldn't wait to see their faces again. The cage was huge, with much vegetation, just like in the forest. Maybe she wouldn't see the sweet things, which was fine too. She knew they were in there and that they were safe again. That was all that mattered. But after a few minutes, Allison saw the two cubs running toward the fenced area where she stood. And they were not alone. Their mother followed closely behind, looking just as pleased. It was clear that Allison left a lasting impression on these animals, a deep connection that is hard to explain. 
They saw her as a second mom in a way. Allison crouched down and held her face close to the fence, which scared the zoo director who had just reached Allison. But then something amazing happened. The panther cubs followed Allison's lead, eventually pressing their faces against hers. They nudged her, just like they did with their owner's mother. And after that, the grown panther mom even followed along. It was an amazing sight which left everyone present stunned. Afterward, the zoo directors thanked Allison for everything, giving her free tickets for life as a result. I accepted, but I was mostly just happy to help.